Hello, uh, this is Hugh Waters and welcome to another Engineers Workbench. No, Bench. Engineers Bench. Get it right, Hugh. Um, I've got I've got Phil over there in London, who's the brains of the operation. And uh, we are talking about not the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I think this is a mythical device that, uh, Phil, no, you've been talking about it for Stay ages. there, Hugh, stay there. Hang on. <laughs> Whilst he's going off, I, he's going to try and prove me wrong. I don't believe it exists in the least. What's that? There we go. It, it is here. I just haven't had a chance to hose it up and start playing with it yet. But here he is. We, I've got a, 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 um, a version 2 board here. Um, uh, and, uh, and yeah, that, that, that's, that's coming soon. I'm just going to have some time to, uh, to, to, to look over it and, uh, and get familiar with it. So stand by for the Raspberry Pi. Well, in the, in the meantime, we had an email from one of the viewers. I hasten to say, we have more than one. I've even met uh, at least one other one. Um, but this is from Richard Lancaster. Richard, hi. Um, thank you very much for that fantastic email. Uh, he said he wanted to say how much he um, enjoyed the, uh, the, the uh, podcast. He said he's an audio engineer turned OB. Um, but he specifically asks, he says, um, one uh, topic that sprung to mind might be a 101 for networking and TCP IP, which is, I think, a sort of throat medicine, isn't it, TCP? Um, anyway, it's obviously a huge subject, he says, um, but with so much equipment uh, that we use nowadays, talking and transferring over gigabyte uh, or gigabit IP or faster, blah, blah, blah. There's lots of it about. And I, as soon as I sent that email over to, to you, Bill, um, you said, aha, what a coincidence. I've got some notes. So tonight... We are doing TCP/IP. Indeed. Bill. Indeed. So, so that that, that it really um, uh, sort of hit, hit the spot for me because um, Route Six, the people I work for, um, a part of the, our training effort, and I've got uh, the website up on screen at the moment, is 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 one hundred and one type training um, uh, for the industry, and as well as the so, so what, the more traditional kind of video one hundred and one, audio one hundred and one, digital formats, and television QC, they're kind of very popular with facilities engineers and the kind of people you know, who are our customers. We also do a TCP. Uh, TCP IP 101 broadcast engineers. Uh, uh, TCP IP uh, slips off the tongue very easily. It's actually IP generally. Uh, there are several uh, flavours of, of protocol that run over um, uh, IP, over internet protocol. And so we tend to cover um, all the things TCP IP, UDP IP, um, uh, routers, hubs, uh, clusters of networks, uh, you know, application in film and television shared storage. Uh, you know, even even the fundamentals of, of wire packet switch network. Uh, why is that important? So hopefully, engineers who are having to connect up their EVS uh, to switches to Avid and ISIS shared storage, those kind of applications, can come away feeling a lot more confident about about their IP addresses, about maybe opening up uh, holes through routers to let traffic through, about quality of service, those kind of things. So it's 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 very much the kind of kickoff for getting. You know, us, our kind of traditional broadcast engineer, who's very confident with with HDSDI, with analog video, analog audio, and all the all the kind of things that we deal with as our bread and butter, um, uh, into the increasing sort of network centric world of of TCP/IP uh, or networking generally. Um, well, it's going to be really interesting. Exactly as you say, you know, the background of people like me is is, is traditional television, real wire, real video, even with digits. Uh, but this is this is a whole new thing and of course I'm using TCIP to talk to you so um, let's find out more about it. Well you say that actually Skype uses UDP IP but we'll get to that subtle distinction a little bit later. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. uh, so up on screen at the moment I've got the uh, the, the sort of uh, the, the frontispiece um, uh, you know the boilerplate for, for, for when I start this talk and this is this is really a, a sort of an hour long session I've often given at trade shows uh, as a as an intro to our, our half day um, uh, um, you know, training session, um, and, and, and the bullet points are why packet switch networks, and this is kind of relevant, I suppose, g given that our last podcast was about RS two three two, and 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 those early kind of um, models of communication of of um, teletypes, and then latterly uh, VDUs connected to modems, connected to phone lines, connected to modem at the other end, connected to a, a mainframe computer, that kind of model of of computer communication, and and the the, the sort of fundamentally different. Um, way of moving data around over packet switch networks. Uh, what, you know, why, why is that important? Uh, layers, you might have heard of the OSI 7 layer model, uh, uh, but we're not going to use the OSI 7 layer model because although it's very academic, it's actually not very applicable to modern networking. And in fact, the Cisco Academy, uh, sometimes called the Internet 4 layer model, is a lot more, I think, descriptive of, of 
of how networking from, from the wire, from the Ethernet cable, uh, up through uh, the different layers of the operating system, um, uh, you know, all the way up to the application layer where you've got your, you know, your web browser or your email program running, um, uh, why I think the four-layer model is actually better, a better way of carrying it around in your head as to how this all works. Uh, protocols. The term layer. Yeah. Uh, the term layer, Phil. Um, just uh, not not to get too hung up on it, but um, has often puzzled me. You know, it's often been referred to, and I I, I wasn't clear that it was something which was a, written in a specification somewhere, or whether it was just a, a, a commonly understood term that I didn't understand. Well, if you if you if you studied computer science at university or or, or you know or did a night class or whatever, then the OSI seven layer model is the standard model of teaching, and and. And, and that kind of abstracts uh, this idea of, of, of being like a physical layer. So that might be an Ethernet cable with voltages varying on it, uh, or it might be a um, you know an ADSL uh, modem uh, with with all the technologies that surround that. And then and then you've got the yeah. uh, the, 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 the the Ethernet connectivity into the computer. So 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 you know how the network card interfaces the operating system. Uh, then then uh, you know kind of going up through the layers. You, you hear people talk about la layer three switches, switches that work by examining yeah. MAC addresses. Now, now MAC address isn't actually anything to do with with TCP/IP. It's to do with Ethernet. Um, uh, and then, and then, kind of, let, you, you come up by layers, and you, you're dealing with is, is it, are these UDP IP packets or TCP IP packets we're dealing with. Then you're coming up another layer to to, to um, uh, the application, um, no, to, to to the protocol layer. So is this HTTP we're dealing with? Is this uh, SMPTE uh, uh, net, uh, email uh, traffic we're dealing with? And then right at the very top, you've got the application layer, and and the whole idea of IP is that it's it's a whole suite of protocols built on top of each other so that the person who's build, writing a web browser doesn't have to worry about how the packets get where they're going. Um, the person who's building a, a, a voice over IP system like Skype that we're using now, they don't have to worry about you know, voltages on the line or they don't have to worry about is it you know, you know, auto negotiating 10 base or 100 base or gigabit ethernet speeds. They just assume that all the stuff below them is working. And so, so the the, the, the yeah. seven layer model, or in fact the four layer model, which I kind of subscribe to as being a more accurate um, way of thinking about these things, uh, it really speaks about this suite of protocols that allow you to, at a, 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 a sort of thought level, you know, segregate out, you know, the the, the, the different levels of importance, if you will. Yeah. So, so with that with that in mind, we then move on to routers, hubs, switches, and how they fundamentally differ. I mean, they're all about connecting networks to networks, but they do different things. Um, classes of networks. If you've if you've kind of got this idea of how a TCP/IP network, an IP, I should say, I should stop saying TCP/IP networks. It's not everything on the internet is TCP/IP, but an IP network. Um, classes of networks and, and how they work. Um, and this, is, of course, is all um, in the light of IPv4, which is the venerable old protocol that's been with us for for many years, decades even, and and really at some point needs to be replaced by IPv6 because we've effectively run out of of IPv4 space. And all the things they're doing. Yes, there was there. a there was an IPv6 day which <coughs> took place earlier this year, wasn't there? That's right. Yeah, yeah. In, uh, in July, and and, and Google yeah. and Amazon, and lots of other big big players, um, uh, did uh, as much as they could over IPv6 those days to see how well the backbone dealt with it, to see how well all the endpoints dealt with it, and you know fundamentally, if the internet was entirely IPv6, um, everything would have to be changed. Uh, you know, the network card in your computer. Um, uh, I mean, Windows has supported IPv6 for a long time, and and, and all those things have worked for a long time. But um, uh, you know, all the routers, all the uh, you know everything that's in a data center, all those kind of things would have to be upgraded or changed. And for the longest time, Cisco, the biggest player in in networking, didn't support IPv6. So it would it would take an awful lot of upgrading to make the internet work entirely end to end IPv6. Um, but it will have to come, and it'll probably happen first at the backbone. And then into the ISPs, yeah. and you'll be very happily working IPv4 at home, you know, using your little fifty-pound um, router that your ISP provided you with, or you bought in in PC World, uh, and and yeah. that will, you know, it'll be years before we have to worry about it at home. Uh, but I've got a friend who works for an ISP, and uh, they gave him an IPv6 router at home for him to just be one of their sort of test sites, and they gave him thirty-two bits of IPv6 space. Um, for his home network, which meant that his home network could potentially be as big as the current internet. So you think about an internet IP address is 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 you know a dot b dot c dot d you know uh, eight bits yeah. eight bits eight bits eight bits you know uh, four four bytes. So you get thirty two bits of address space. 
Um, but under IPv6, it's so voluminous, the address space, the entire internet fits into a tiny little corner of it. And, and so it's entirely possible for you to have a home network with exactly the same amount of IP address space that the current internet has worldwide. Um, so after that, we'll just talk about some tips and tricks. Um, uh, okay. Broadcast packets, um, uh, you know, which is what I find very handy. I use it all the time uh, when a piece of equipment has been misconfigured. And I don't know what its IP address is or even what network it's on. Um, Ethernet speeds, where, where, if you fall foul of things wanting to run at gigabit speeds, but you need them to ramp down for, for legacy reasons. And also, port forwarding on Skype. It's a good trick, and it also reveals a few things about, um, about uh, uh, you know, how IP works. Um, so, uh, kicking right off, uh, history, uh, why packet switch networks? Well, we, we talked last time very much about RS-232. And if, if you sort of spin back to the 60s and you think about how people used mainframe computers and, and uh, you know, how banks kept to mainframes and did all their stuff, it was very much over synchronous network links. And it was typically you know, a modem connecting to either a public telephone line or a, or a, 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 a a, a, you know, a least line connection, but an audio connection nonetheless. So modems at each end and uh, uh, RS-232 connections to terminals and mainframes and uh, you know, hardware handshaking that moderated the flow of data across that network so that you, know, you didn't overwhelm the, the, the phone line for, for you know, whatever bandwidth it could support and, the, and whatever bandwidth the modems could support. And all very kind of point to point and under hardware control will control the flow of data and you know quite restrictive um, but I think even as, as far as you know 50 years ago they realized that that um, this couldn't go on and that if there was going to be a usable network that lots of things could connect to it had to be a packet switch network it had to be a network which would tolerate variable bitrate data streams and um, uh, you, you know, sometimes you just have a phone line. Sometimes you have a high-speed network connection. Sometimes it would be a radio connection. You know, and and, and the protocols would have to tolerate that. Um, uh, switches and routers and other network equipment would would have to buffer and queue and and regulate the flow of data across this network. And there'd be variable delays depending on 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 throughput and depending on how congested at any one moment a part of the network might be. And and so you might find that packets were arriving out of sequence or they'd gone by different routes and things like that. So all of a sudden you've got a very different um, uh, philosophy of moving data between two computers. Now the advantages are you don't have to have dedicated circuits. Uh, data doesn't have to flow the same route. Uh, 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 and, and each circuit can carry many different things at the same time. You know, if it's just delivering email from server to server, well, hey, there's a bit of capacity there. We can be, uh, you know, sending some web traffic as well at the same time, and, and, and that's all good. It's not a dedicated line tied up for one thing. Because the disadvantages so are... You can see how... Sorry, you can see gone. how this comes out of military thinking. It's just high, you can see how this comes out of military thinking. It's very high resilience. Um, Absolutely. It's all built in, theoretically. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and that's what people often say, isn't it? That it was it was oh. this idea that that you know sort of like two thirds of the United States could be bombed into oblivion, and the network would still have to work. You still have, be able to get data from one place to another. Now, of course, the disadvantage yeah. of, of a network like that is that uh, every data unit that's sent through this packet switch network has to carry enough information uh, in the headers, uh, uh, you know, of, of the data, so that the nodes on the network can determine how to route the data. So, so everything has to carry its own. Um, uh, not not only the address of where it has to get to, but also you know the return to sender type address if if it kind of you know it doesn't make it and and, and so there's there's an overhead there's a, there's there's a bulk there's extra stuff that even to send a single byte requires an awful lot more extra stuff to go with it. There's a, 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 and, and presumably within that header there is something which says I belong in this part of whatever. It the overall thing, if you think yes, of a train well, carriage, uh, well, whereabouts on the train it goes? Yeah, well, that's that's kind of getting a slight uh, up 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 the protocol suite a tiny bit. That's part of TCP. TCP has um, uh, okay. uh, sequence uh, numbers in, in, in packet headers. Um, uh, UDP is different. UD UDP is is uh, just kind of like send it out there. If it gets there, fair enough. If it doesn't, you know, we'll just have to try again. But we have no knowledge of this. Whereas TCP uh, handles all that. You know, it keeps ah. a track of of packets. Who's got there? If they've arrived out of sequence, how do we reorder them? Um, you know, if something hasn't arrived in time, how do we re-request those packets? All that kind of stuff. Um, so that's that, that's why we've got this suite of protocols where a designer of an application can choose. He might say, um, uh, "Yeah, I'm doing near real-time audio delivery over my Skype system," 
if packets go missing but show up a second later I, I, there's nothing I can do with them that audio is old hat now I can't use it if I lose packets I've just got to kind of do my best and and fill in you know maybe use some error correction and, and some and some creative kind of you know nonsense to try and hide the fact that there's some packets missing from that audio but for some applications you know that require timely uh, delivery of data TCP doesn't just doesn't do it you know it's just nonsense to try and recorrect and resend data that that kind of was old hat a second ago you know um, yeah. and there's other things as well so DNS for example the domain name system that runs over UDP and, and typically a computer will request a domain uh, will, will request um, resolution of a domain name back to an IP address and yeah, if it doesn't hear, you know, in however long it's defined, you know, a few milliseconds, it'll just try again. And that's why you might enter two or three DNS numbers into your PC networking stack. Because if it doesn't hear back from one of them, just try the next one. You know, it doesn't really matter if, if that data goes awry. It's not timely. It, it's not it's not critical in that respect. Yeah. So I've got, I've got a, a little a little um, uh, graphic up on screen of uh, page three of the uh, 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 packet switching in a data network. And that just kind of, I suppose... Um, um, you, you, you know, it's, it's a bit of a reminder for the things we've already said about about no fixed paths. Um, every node having to know how to send things um, through the network. Uh, you know, each each packet that travels across the network has to have a source and destination address, so that's achievable, and uh, typically a sequence number as well, so we know where it fitted into the sequence. Um, and uh, and uh, it's kind of simplified version of the internet there, um, with uh, some routers and some uh, endpoints as well. But we mentioned uh, layers. We talked about um, uh, yes. layers, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, and and so the, the diagram I've got up at the moment shows both the traditional, you know, the much taught OSI model, and next to it the DARPA model, or sometimes referred to as the, the Cisco networking model. And okay, what, what's OSI stand for? OSI is it's a standards body in America, and I don't remember, oh, is it right? don't remember what it stands for. <laughs> The other standards <coughs> institute. Possibly, yeah, yeah. Um, those <laughs> fellas, <laughs> not as popular. <laughs> um, outsiders. But, the uh, outsiders standard institute. This is a nice diagram because it shows how the different um, layers relate to um, physicality, how they relate to um, uh, uh, IP packet style, uh, TCP and UDP, where they fit in, and then all the protocols that we're very familiar with, HTTP for web pages, FTP for moving files across the, the web, SMTP for moving email in one direction, uh, DNS, uh, SNMP for, for, for alert management, RIP, I can't remember, I've momentarily forgotten what that protocol is, um, but um, so OSI model starts at the physical layer, um, and then they, they have this thing, the data link layer, so that they make a distinction between wires and voltages and um, uh, data rates, you know, so 100 base, 10 base T, gigabit Ethernet, um, whereas the, uh, the DARPA or the Cisco model just combines that into one and says that's the network interface layer, uh, you know, and it's up to the network car to negotiate um, uh, the appropriate speed of communication. Uh, and then uh, we're up to the, what, what, what um, the OSI model calls the network layer or what uh, DARPA or Cisco call the internet layer. And that's where we start talking about IP packets. Um, uh, and and uh, you know, IP packets can typically they carry lots of things, but typically they're defined up on the next layer, the transport layer. That's a common name between both systems. Uh, they're typically TCP or UDP. Or in fact, um, there's also another kind of packet called um, ICMP, which is often listed as being down in the network layer. And that's for things like ping and trace route and those other kind of low level uh, um, uh, utility type protocols and then right up at the top layer yeah. um, which is covered by three OSI uh, layers uh, the application layer, the presentation layer and the session layer uh, the Cisco layer just calls that the application layer and that's where your web browser sits or that's where your um, your email program sits and so yeah. with that in mind you've now got this idea of a suite of, of protocols a suite of standards uh, sitting on top of each other that allow the operating system the stack as it's called within the operating system uh, to effectively know, you know, uh, differentiate between an application requesting to send a file and the stack asking the network card to stick a packet out onto the wire. You know, they're, they're, they're yeah. the kind of distinctions. Um, and I've just kind of um, uh, given a bit of a summary there as to why the, the OSI 7 layer model isn't too useful nowadays. I mean, I suppose, um, you know, if you're teaching it at university, it's, it's, uh, it maybe allows you to bring out some nuances. But if you're thinking about this in terms of planning your facilities network, 
actually it's not a lot of help uh, and, uh, and again page six there of the, of the notes is uh, is just a, a, a summary of, of the Cisco Academy the ARPANET uh, layers so all of this um, brings us to how do we address packets on the internet how, how are packets carried around on the internet and in fact the standard which goes all the way back to the 70s is, to, is, is, is IP now the internet didn't always carry IP packets it wasn't until 1983 that the um, uh, internet task force mandated that all internet traffic had to be IP um, but really for the last 30 years everything that's moved across the internet <coughs> excuse me, has, has, has been IP and, and IPv4 is the one that, 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 that was commonly adopted there was an IPv5, yeah. but it related more to kind of early efforts in in um, in IP television and things like that, and never found any traction at all. IPv6, which we've you know alluded to, is is what's coming, and that has much much bigger address space, and um, huge great numbers. Uh, but we won't talk about that because that really is something for another time or something for for, for, for somebody to research. Um, but so so there, at the top of the slide, here, I've got a couple of IP addresses. Uh, the first one is 192.168.0.22. And the one below is 83.56.123.78. Now, they're, although they both look similar in as much as they're both uh, dotted quads, as they're sometimes called, four values with dots between them, and, and, and the values can run um, 1 through 254. <coughs> 255 is, is special, it's reserved for other things. So with, with that in mind, you say, well, how many, how many IP addresses could there possibly be? Well, so what's 254 times 254 times 254 times 254? It's... 4 billion or something of that order um, and, and you think well 4 billion seems like an awful lot that's, that's you know there's only 6 billion people on the planet you know but actually um, uh, IP address space isn't that universally distributed when, when the internet was first being figured out the authorities who control IP addresses were very kind of easy about handing out whole slabs of IP address space to big companies and to universities and to government departments so consequently <coughs> the five dot range is owned by the British Ministry of Defence. So, so any IP address that starts five dot something something something, something uh, is owned by the British Ministry of Defence. And do the British Ministry of Defence use um, sixteen million addresses? No, they probably don't. But it's convenient for them to have it, you know. Yeah. And, and 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 so it doesn't really matter. Uh, so that's what's caused rapid depletion of the IPv4 address space. The fact that they're not all available. They're all kind of handed out willy-nilly in big slabs. Apple have a have a complete A-class network. Hewlett Packard do. Um, lots of big American universities have complete A-class networks where potentially they could be sitting behind 16 million addresses. You know, they have number dot x dot y dot z, and anything on the internet that starts with their number goes to them. And, and you can see that there's only 254 A-class networks. So very quickly, you could chew up the available address space by doing that. Uh, and uh -huh. that's really what's happened now having said that uh, some publicly minded companies are being persuaded to relinquish those huge great address slabs they've got and they are but that's brought another problem uh, because traditionally routers have been programmed the IP address is useful because um, it, it, it provides some geography to where people are and when I say geography I don't mean physical geography I mean network geography so if you see a five dot address a router doesn't have to do a router out on the internet doesn't have to do anything other than know, ha ha, British Ministry of Defence, their data centre's there. Off you go, packet on your way. Um, but if the five dot network is now being split into, you know, so everything from five dot zero zero one through dot five dot up to one two eight now belongs to the MOD. But the MOD have released a big slab of their address space. Well, now every internet router has to have its routing table updated that's fine you know, they were, they, you know there's, there's a thing called border gateway protocol which is what allows internet routers to maintain all that information uh, but we're actually getting to the point where even reasonably contemporary internet routers I'm talking big iron routers out on the internet you know on the backbones you know uh, uh, internet service providers at very big companies uh, as the IP address space starts to fat fragment as as big A and B class subnets are rendered up to be sort of broken up and used more effectively, some of those routers are starting to run out of memory that allows them to keep track of everything. <coughs> so IPv4 depletion uh, is one problem, but actually, if it wasn't a problem, um, router uh, address space is is another problem. 
Now, the, oh, thing, the, th- the thing that really kind of has saved us, I suppose, is network address translation, which we'll get to in a bit. But um, so, so let's back, back to these two IP addresses I've got sat here. The top one might look very familiar to you if you ever configured a home network or a small office network. Any network that starts with 192.168 is, <coughs> that's called, um, uh, they're, they're non-routable IP addresses. You couldn't put those out on the internet and expect the packets to get anywhere. They're IP ranges that have been reserved for local area networks. Um, so your network at home typically will be 192.168. something. something. Uh, or if I'm coming to you from 06 as a matter of interest yes or, or, or there's, a, there's another set of non-routable addresses so 10.100 something dot something there that, that's another set of local area network reserved space and in fact there are huge great areas of, of reserved network space which have never been released for use on the internet and, and, and that the expression that's used is they that those addresses uh, live in bogon space they're, they're not available for routing across the web and, and and so um, that's how local area networks work. And, and the, but, but the address below it, that 83.56.123.78, that's a real proper, honest to goodness, routable on the internet IP address. You know, and and uh, I think the day I wrote these notes, that was the IP address that my home router had. So uh, so, so, so that's, that, that, that's how stuff really gets done on the internet. Now, as well as the IP address that you might assign to the network card in your PC or to the wireless network port on your iPad or the network port on your Xbox, um, you also have to defi- define something called a, a subnet mask. People get very kind of confused by subnet masks. Um, on a small local area network where you've only got a maximum of 254 devices, the subnet mask looks like that. It's 255.255.255.0. And the subnet mask serves to tell all the equipment on the network what are the things that don't change and what are the things that do change. So the zero at the end basically gates out the last byte of the of the of the IP address, the last eight bits, and says these are the bits that are interesting. Everything else should remain the same on this local area network. Um, and with, with that in mind, you can then say, oh, so our, my little local area network at home uh, or in the office or whatever, I can have up to 254 devices, and that's because my subnet mask says that it's only the last byte that's really of any interest. Ah, so if you had a network with more, you could expect that the, the byte before would yes. be a zero. So, so in fact, yeah, you call quite often office networks are 255.255.0.0, which means that um, the IP address then gets a bit more interesting. You can have a bit more sort of stuff going on. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, so, so, so they're all to do with IP and how packets get routed around local area networks and across the internet. Um, but there's another thing we have to consider, that, that's called the MAC address, the, the, the Media Access Control address, or sometimes referred to as the hardware address. And that's the typical of the number below, and I, I think that's the MAC address of the uh, network adapter on my laptop, 01.23, oh no, I just made that up, didn't I? 23.45.67.89-AB is a MAC address. And they have to be unique for, for every piece of equipment. Um, uh, the way routers work, uh, if there are two devices on a, on a network with the same MAC address, uh, you, you, you're, you're really stuffed. So, how, how are MAC addresses assigned? Is there, is there some sort of central MAC address? Uh, there, there, there is, yeah. So, so typically, uh, is, it, is it the first byte or the first two bytes are manufacturer specific? And then, uh, that, 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 yeah, you can obviously look this up. There, there's a whole kind of set of rules as to how you generate MAC addresses. Uh, but they, uh, they, there's meant to be no MAC address clashes in the world. It does happen. Um, I can remember when I was at the BBC, we we sourced a particular. There's a lot of noise going on your on your end, Hugh. What are you doing? A lot of noise. Oh, yeah. I know what. Sorry, so, you're, you're I moved a piece you? of paper. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting bored. I just wanted to do something there. <laughs> I moved the piece of paper over the microphone. Sorry about that. So, so yeah, at the, at the BBC, we we bought some, we bought a big batch of cheap network cards, and we discovered they all had the same MAC address, and hence we're all unusable on the same local area network. <laughs> so it does it does happen, but it's not meant to. So IP addresses, um, MAC addresses, subnet masks, uh, and, and the last thing we have to think about when when a little these little packets of data are being sent either over local area networks or over the internet is is a port, and a port number is is a an extra kind of bit of stuff that goes along with the packet and it basically uh, says what kind of packet this is really I mean it's not that hard and fast connection but it's it's an easy way of saying uh, you know is this a bit of a web page or is this uh, you know an FTP packet or whatever and, and there are some so there's some standardized port numbers I've got them up on the screen 
80 being the uh, standard for web traffic, 21 being the FTP port, uh, 135 to 139 and 445, they're, they're, they're the ones that Windows File Sharing Protocol, uh, your SMB, Serial Message Block users. And VNC, if you ever use VNC, um, you know, the, the, the remote control protocol where you can take control of another computer's desktop, that typically travels over 5900, but you can define that. And in fact, generally the low order ports, sub 1000 or sub, sub 1024, you know, computer 1000, yeah. uh, they're, they're, they're reserved for defined protocols. And anything above 1024 is kind of it's a free-for-all. Um, and so if you wanted to write yourself a, a protocol for using your iPhone to control, you know, your your bathtub, you know, you, you, you'd be at liberty to use any port number over 1024. You know, and, but, but also you'd have to be aware that maybe it clashed with some other device, you know. So, so they're not well-defined. They're... Uh, um, uh, uh, that's that's the way they kind of go. Um, okay. So we've hit kind of thirty minutes here. I might I might take a little break there. You know, just I think that's a good, and, yeah. and and and. Uh... I think well, well, that's a, actually a really good place to to take a pause because we now have had a quick history of uh, of what it is. Um, we've had a quick look at the at the design of 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 what this packetized uh, data is and. We've looked at the numbers, the the IP addresses, uh, the MAC addresses, and the ports. So but I think we've now got a good crystallised view of what what we're talking about, the stuff of what we're talking about. And the next thing we'll start talking about is some of the types of protocols that are coming up. So I think that we can wait for for the next instalment. Jolly good. Talk to you shortly. So there. <laughs>